Um, my name is Stephanie Dawes, and I am the series coordinator for Girl Scout San Diego Program Specialist, and I am also the Bronze Award Specialist. So for those of you with juniors, I'm your person. My name is Amanda, I'm also a program specialist with our council, and I'm your silver award person, so you ladies with cadets, you're mine. Um, and yeah, I think, we, we, I, as you can all see, this is a very large group we have this morning, um, and you're all here for some different things. Um, sure, and Steph would like to tell you about it. I would love to tell you about it. <laughs> um, so, Many of you signed up for one of three sessions. You either signed up for Take Action, Bronze, or Silver. The reason that we have condensed three sessions into one is because- There's only two of us. There's only two of us. <laughs> uh, so with that in mind, um, what we have devised is the best way to sort of try and cover everything within an hour and 15 minutes. So what you are going to get is a mix between sort of group brainstorm about the difference sort of between take action and service. We're gonna hit take action really hard because that's the crux of what we're doing with journey associated take action projects, bronze and silver. And then what we are going to do as we continue through the session is have some time for bronze, silver and take action to share best practices and actually ask us questions. So we'll get there after we hit take action really hard. Um, so with that in mind, we are going to get started. And um, I just want to share a caveat that Steph and I have both done two sessions already today. <laughs> so please bear with us as we try to power through this and get you the best information that we can. Yes. Yay. Awesome. Woo. Okay. okay. So um, in order to jump off, I am actually going to move over to this board and I am going to talk as loudly as possible. Um, so, I think let's do that second because we okay. want to do the brainstorm first. Yes. Can you talk about the brainstorm while sure. I get it ready? Alrighty, so we're going to do a little group brainstorm and for those of you in the back, if you could either stand or project really loudly so we can all um, share our ideas with each other. So what we want you to think about is some characteristics of these two types of projects, and Steph's going to write them down. Um, so does anybody have any ideas of what type of a project that would be a short-term service project, a quick fix for a community issue? Yeah. Um, San Diego cleanup. I love a San Diego. I love a beach cleanup. Sure. Anything else? A food drive. A food drive. A food drive. Yep. What other kinds of short-term service quick fixes? Yes, they're in the middle. Yep, a blanket drive. Yep. Toys for tots. Toys for tots. Visiting a retirement home. Yep, a visiting retirement home. Operation Christmas Child. One more time. Operation Christmas Child. Operation Christmas Child. I'm guessing that they're not familiar with the <laughs> I'm not familiar with that. Is it a, a donation drive, I'm, I'm guessing? Yes, shoe boxes of, of items overseas. Great. Sounds, sounds like a great service project. How about some uh, take action projects? So these are a more of a long term um, addressing of an issue. What do you think a take action project might look like? Yes? Homeless. Something for the homeless, long term. What else? Yeah. Putting up a stop sign. Putting up a stop sign in your community. Yeah. What else? Recycling at a school. Recycling at a school. Okay. Um, any other ideas? Something for healthy education. Something an educational component. Yeah. Like healthy living, a running club, or something like that. A running club. Yeah. Way in the back. Yeah, something with the parks, the uh, improvement that helps carry forward, yeah. Any other take action projects? A community closet. A community, what, is, what would that entail? It's a place where the homeless and the underserved in the community can come to get clothing and shoes. Okay. And yeah, so uh, a, a place, a resource for homeless to find clothing and, and, and job 
resources. Okay. All right. So, so the big piece that the, the phrase that I would love you to take away from today, if you don't take anything else, is that take action projects are with the community and service projects are for the community. So do you, do you, is the concept of the difference there, do you guys know what I'm trying to say? So take action projects are with the community. So you're partnering with the community or a community organization to provide a long-term service that addresses a community issue. And a service project is for the community. It's a short-term fix or a solution to an issue that might be um, a longer uh, or a bigger issue. All right. Does that make sense to everyone? Is there anyone that would like the explanation in a different way? <laughs> okay, <laughs> perfect. Okay, so on the, not everyone can see it, but I'm trying. <laughs> so on the poster over there is, I love a clean San Diego. That is a short-term fix because it is a one-day beach cleanup. Mm -hmm. And a take action project from that would be asking the question and getting to the root cause. Why is there trash on the beach? Maybe you go to the beach, you look around, there aren't trash cans, there aren't recycling bins. So what you decide to do is work with the city to put trash cans and recycling bins out and you label, you like label them with you know, why you're doing it and why it's important mm -hmm. to um, keep the beaches clean. So what you've done there is gone from a one-day fix to a long-term, um, more sustainable option. The trash can stay there. And depending on how old your girls are, you may go so far as to um, work with the city or work with other troops to make sure that the trash cans are maintained. Um, if you want to do a really good educational component along with that, maybe you host a, um, a kickoff day where you do do that I love a clean San Diego type feel, but you add in a really good educative component about why it's really important to pick up trash, why it's important to recycle, what happens if you don't, so that um, you can sustainably affect how people think. So sometimes take action is as simple as changing someone's mind. That can be a sustainable change. So depending on how old your girls are, if you're in here and you're working with daisies on a journey associated take action project, maybe, the conversa maybe they have conversations within their troops or their families about an issue that they care about. Why are gardens important? As the girls get older and older, they get a little bit more complex. Do you want another example? I'll do one more example. Collection drive. I'm hitting it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I had caffeine. Um, put it in perspective, I never have caffeine, so this is awesome. Um, I'm thrilled to be here with you, lady. <laughs> We're going to have a great hour. Okay. <laughs> Back to focusing. So, collection drives. Um, I hear, I hear, I see collection drives all the time um, when I talk to people about bronze and when I talk to people about take action projects. The, there's a, the misconception is that a collection drive is sustainable because we're delivering coats or we're delivering dog beds or whatever else and people can wear coats for a really long time. And that's true. Um, or the dogs can sleep under blankets for a really long time and that is a great service project. It's awesome. Homeless shelters need supplies drive. Pets need blankets. Um, so it's not to say that it's not a really worthwhile thing to do. It's just not quite take action. Um, the example of how to build that into a take action project, um, if we're looking at dog shelters, say, is look at, okay, so you're asking us to donate dog beds. Let's talk about why you, know, why you have that need, because you have so many dogs um, let's, and then you have the conversation with your girls. Okay, so why are there so many dogs? Why are these pet shelters so overpopulated? Maybe it's because people don't have um, information on where or how um, or why it's important to spay or neuter their pets. So maybe instead of doing a collection drive or in association with a collection drive, you can do a spaying and neutering clinic or information session. Um, you can create an information sheet on where to get your pets spayed or neutered. 
Um, you can raise awareness about adopting pets, something like that. It's going back to the root cause and then identifying a solution that addresses the root cause. Um, a lot of times I get questions, is there only one root cause? No. Um, very rarely do people agree on the root cause of anything, right? So if your girls get to a root cause that's different than someone else's, great. That means that that dog shelter, that animal shelter, is getting two really great take action projects that are addressing two different pieces of its fundamental need. So it's okay if they have a different root cause than you do or they've come to a different conclusion. Um, for defining a root cause, it's like the fundamental reason why something is happening. Does that make sense? Okay, so now what we are going to do is practice. <laughs> practice makes perfect. Um, and this is actually from part of a, um, a present, uh, conference that Amanda and I went to last year with GSUSA. So we are giving to you what was given to us and was really helpful in giving us the resources and tools that we needed to support um, bronze and silver um, leaders over this past year. We're hoping this will help you. Um, what we are going to be passing around now are small half sheets that have um, three examples of issues, a short-term solution, and we're going to ask you to work as your table to brainstorm take action projects that would fit. Um, and then in the next 10 to 15 minutes, however long it takes to get through all three, we'll do a table share, um, which means that we will ask one person from each table to stand up and share their favorite take action project, the favorite one that they came up with. Does that make sense? If it doesn't make sense, will you give me moose antlers? I love moose antlers. Okay. So um, I'm going to just reiterate it one other time. So on this half sheet, what you will see in just a moment is a um, column that says issue and short-term solution. And then you will see another column that says take action. Um, there are definitions under each. What you're going to do as a table or in smaller groups is read your issue and a potential solution and then work to identify what a take action project would actually look like. So to sort of help you clarify the difference between service and take action. Yes, I see, oh, is that a question? No, okay. So um, a short term solution is a one time effort with a short-term impact, you are going to develop the Take Action Project, which identifies the root cause, has long-term impact and sustainable support. That sounds intimidating, but again, it's looking at how can you change people's minds and um, sort of how can you identify the root cause and address something a little bit more sustainably. Yes, it is a little bit more work than a service project, but it's more meaningful and it, it helps us build girls that are more empowered leaders. Go team go, we'll be walking around to help.
guards are at the cop houses to get them involved. And parents are crazy to help with a school guard because they know their kid's going to get something, um, something tangible. And San Diego Unified School District has a program that's called Farm to Cafe where you um, sign up and get trained and then you're able to put what's in your garden onto the cafeteria like salad bar or for the cafeteria workers to put it like on pizza or use in cooking. And so if you're bringing up an organic garden, everybody at the school serves organic vegetables. Cool, does anybody have any questions or comments? long-term changes in everyone's awareness at the school. Thank you very much. Can we do a little clap, round of applause? Um, can we go to the table behind that table and we'll go in a circle, please? Someone stand up. Can you say your name? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can go yeah. the other way. Yeah, we'll go the other way. <laughs> <laughs> So we picked uh, a dangerous and dirty empty lot. So we thought that, first of all, you'd have to find out who owns that lot, whether it's city or private. And then, um, so then we'd have to create awareness. There's this empty lot. We'd have to create that awareness to the city or to the owner, because they may live in a different part of the world or whatever. So then the girls uh, would have to go to the planning commissions, let's say if it was city owned, go to the planning commissions, figure out if there is anything going on with this piece of um, land. And hopefully eventually we could turn that into either like a youth center or a playground for ki the local kids um, or actually going off of the co-op gardens. We thought th that was really interesting, of course, and, and all of these have their own specific, what would be sustainable, obviously, a, a youth group, the kids could come and play. Um, the co-op garden, again, going, the food would go to the local schools. Uh, and if it was like a youth center, that could create uh, maybe a job and in return create revenue for the city. So. Thank you. issue is kids feeling unsafe and bullied at school. And it says the solution hosts Roses Without Thorns event where you send a compliment anonymously to a classmate. So our take action was, it could be as simple really as having the Girl Scouts create posters for an anti-bullying campaign. And we actually do that at our school. Um, and the posters would go up throughout the school. So it's actually creating environment for the children to see to be nice and not bully. Uh, it could go as far as having the kids hold a parent education class and working in conjunction with parents and teachers and the principal. And at our school, we actually do have a character education program where the fifth grade children actually go and teach kindergarten and first grade, first graders. Uh, they have lessons that we've created, and then they go in and teach the kids and partner up with children. Thank you. It's ongoing. Thank you. So what I loved about that is she brought out the, um, the point of progression, that it can be as simple as making posters. People read posters, and it changes their mind or informs them to as complex as hosting a parent education night. So with all Take Action projects, you know, you're starting out with daisies, 
you go all the way up to seniors and ambassadors. Um, the level of their projects and the level of depth that you get into can be different, and it's okay. Another thing that I'll point out really quickly is with Daisy, Brownie, and Juniors, especially when you get into the Bronze Award, um, the important note is that they understand sustainability. They get what it means. The important part for Cadet Senior Ambassador is they start to make projects sustainable. So if with Daisies and Brownies you can make a sustainable project and they understand it and they get it, that's great. If for your group the first step is doing a project and starting to get that light bulb about what sustainability and take action really looks like are, that is also success. Perfect. Um, can I have the next table come up and stand by the mic and share their take action project? Come on down. So ours was a complex home interested in free entertainment. Uh, so there were lots of great ideas passed around on the table. Um, one of them was uh, a lot of a lot of kids in school now have to do a lot of community service projects and stuff like that. So they could uh, use the social media. One of the ladies talked about uh, how they have lemonroadpatch.com, and there they can advertise all the different ways in which they can help the convalescent or retirement homes or any, any people in those residents as well. Another lady talked about uh, her girls can do a video where they can share experiences um, that they've had with, uh, you know, with the elderly. So I think that's a really great way to go. And we talked about the root cause. We're in a society. We're in a go, go, go. And unfortunately, sometimes our parents go in there. And so it's keeping the girls aware of um, what a treasure they really are for us. And hopefully, as they, they become more involved with the elderly, they'll as they grow older, they'll, you know, hopefully they'll keep more um, in touch with with you know services like that. So, I'm Stephanie. Um, we chose the Children's Hospital. It requests activities for children, and the solution was hosting a game collection drive and hold game night at the hospital. And I have personal experience of sitting around a hospital. So one person suggested, it's also the families, I feel like, that need a little activity. So we, one person suggested interviewing the families that are there, what kinds of things they would like to see, um, and maybe coordinating a regular activity night, correct um, games or crafts, cooking, um, something to break the monotony, and also a suggestion of maybe creating a website with um, what activities are available in the area of the hospital to keep them busy? I like it. That caffeine's really working. It is. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Shannon, and I'm with Ginger. I like all ice cream. So, uh, go ice cream. So, uh, the topic that we decided to share with you all was racial tensions exist in the community. And uh, we decided that we could tackle this uh, on a kid level and bring it to the local school and have uh, the group or troop uh, bring games, either physical outdoor activities or indoor activities, and uh, allow anybody to join the club and to play games and interact with one another in that way because when we play games, we're not really concerned about what race we are, we're concerned about what are the rules of the game and it allows uh, turn taking and other dialogue to take place and we could uh, try to partner up with an employee at the school uh, maybe a teacher or um, an ACES after school program person to then continue the club once uh, our troop or group has moved on from that school. Okay, we also did the convalescent home. We were talking about um, the root cause would be, um, you know, trying to help prevent boredom, especially for those elderly that don't have family that can come and visit them. We figured the girls can probably um, play games with them. This is short term. Um, sing songs with them, give them new ideas on games um, or exercises to do. Long term would be um, like kind of go out in the community and, and um, have signs for adopt and adopt a grandparent and have people sign up and, and um, once a month or once a week just sign up to visit, a, visit one of them and just sit and talk with them or whatnot. And then um, another um, woman at our table said 
that she had a friend that had um, different music different music um, companies set up like a, a calendar to have some of their students come by once a month and um, either or dance studios you know do a little performance for them or um, maybe high school students that need to do community service have them once a month kind of go over there and you know sing with them or the choir or dance or whatever with them. So that's what we came up with. Thank you. Um, we chose the dangerous and dirty empty lot. Uh, what we thought about was a, a couple of different things. A community garden where we would uh, either get the supplies donated from a local like Home Depot or whatever to start the garden and then possibly have enlist uh, help the seniors or retired people to keep the garden going, you know, as far as weeding and um, watering. Either that or we thought of selling plots in the garden to people who have or live in apartments and, you know, can't have a garden, that they could go there and have their vegetable garden and do that. Um, either that or turn it into a farmer's market where once a week people could come out and sell and they could also enjoy, the community could enjoy the stuff that's grown in the garden. It's lots of fun. So 
And the other side is the seven components of a successful take action project. Um, and this, um, even if you're not at the award stage, if you're just doing journey take action projects, you can totally make this work for you. Um, you'll see on the left hand side, the column has the components and it shows what they align to in the awards. Um, so if you haven't had a chance to look at your award um, steps yet, this will tell you the, the part of the award that it aligns to. So uh, does everybody know the prerequisite for a highest awards project? What do you have to do first? Yeah, a journey, yes. awesome. So that's step one in all of the awards. So the uh, components start with step two or three because it's assuming that you've already done step one. So there you go, so that's a great resource as well. Um, and something you can go through as, you, as you're walking your girls through the process of the highest award, you can use this as a resource to make sure you're kind of on the right path. Awesome. All right, the next one we're going to look at is another two-sided snazzy dazzy sheet. It's the take actions outcome by grade level, and on the flip side it says what take action can do for Girl Scouts. This is really just kind of a, a, a at a glance, again, it's a resource to show you kind of the, what, why we do this. You know, this is why take action is important to Girl Scouts. Um, it shows you the outcomes by grade level is, is a great way to maybe help convince your true parents about why take action is important. Um, it can be a great way to uh, communicate with outside organizations you're trying to work with. Um, if you're fundraising for your troop to help work towards an award or a take action project, um, this might be some reasons you could give to outside organizations for why it's so important. And then on the back, there's even more reasons. It talks about what Take Action does for girls, for volunteers, for councils, some great bullet points. It's another fantastic resource. Okay, what other pages? You should also have the Bronze Award Final Report and or the Silver Award Final Report. These are the most updated reports from council and should be your bread and butter. Never mind. So one thing I do want you to know, your silver, I just looked at this, um, the final report form for the silver award is due, this is a due date, the, the, the final report form for the silver award is due September 30th of the year your girl enters grade nine. And that would, uh, entry and uh, submission by that date will make her eligible for the council-wide uh, silver award ceremony for that fall. So, uh, I also want to point out that this is for both bronze and silver. These awards are given final approval by the troop leader. So you don't have to submit to council for final approval or to officially earn the award. You as a troop leader are the one who is determining whether the girls have completed a take action award, which is why we want you to know the difference between service and take action. So we're definitely both Steph and I are, are welcome to be resources to you to help get you through the process. And I love getting ideas from the field. You can bounce your ideas off me. Um, if you're wondering what the girls are, if what the girls are doing is what they um, should be doing. Uh, but yeah, the final report is signed off on the very bottom on the back. The girl signs it. The troop leader signs it, and if you have a project advisor that's an optional role, they would sign it as well. So it's not approved by council, it's approved by you. Oh, and we love to have those reports, because not only does it help us track what's happening in the field and how girls are doing their projects, we can recognize your girls on a council level if you turn in your report forms. And if you're bronze, I read every single report. So it is not wasted. I will read every single one of them. Okay, I read the silvers too. You're not yeah. Sorry. <laughs> 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 All 